All right, June 25th, 2017. I have battened down the canoe at Treasure Island camp area. And access. We're now proceeding to Saratoga, refuel, and go drop the other car off at foot, which is 17.3 river miles from our current location. In theory, it's 10.30, according to my clock, it's about, my clock's about 20 minutes off, so it's about 10.10. Probably take us about four to five hours. Currents probably about we've probably got about a ten knot current. No wind, which is perfect. And it's really fascinating to me, like when you think about the Missouri River expedition that was headed by Lewis and Clark. They paddled up it to find the headwaters. You know, think about that. They didn't come down it. They paddled up it. And at that time, I'm sure if you were to look at a river map from that time, the river probably had a completely different path out around Livingston. And there's probably areas farther down from there where the Missouri meets the Mississippi. I think it meets Mississippi. I don't remember. I think that's accurate. I'll have to check my maps. But all of these rivers had different points all of them flowed differently at some point in time water of course always follows the path of least resistance so if you need to reroute a river you just have to put something you put something there and it reroutes itself it finds the next easiest course really quite fascinating the behavior, behavior of a river. And it's like, I learned, I grew up along Clear Creek, which flows into the Yellowstone River. And I learned just from playing in that, the nature of an undercurrent. There are, in the three mile stretch that went by our house, there were four places that <coughs> were extremely deep. They were very calm on the surface. On their underside, they were flowing about seven, eight, nine, sometimes even ten knots or more. And what would happen is you'd be walking along, you might be in the shallow and you'd be walking along and then you would hit a point in the point in the creek. The water would stay calm on the surface but the water underneath, the undercurrent, would pull you down, just, just like that. And it was really quite interesting, because then, of course, once that undercurrent grabbed you, you had two options. You could wait, let it pull you down to the bottom, then kick off the bottom, or, you'd have to swim with it and come out the other side. 
usually these undercurrents were 15 to 20 feet in length and then they'd slope back up and hit the shallow again really quite fascinating stuff river behavior and you know those undercurrents of course are just as dangerous as an ocean undertow and yeah so always keep that in mind when you're walking a creek bed or a river bed you know just saying it can be shallow 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 well hey it's 20 feet deep and you're sucked down to the bottom of this thing and maybe you get pinned maybe you don't I better stop for a minute and wait for my traveling buddy to catch up. Make sure he hasn't run out of gas or something. <sighs> so anyway, there it was. I was 15 and this guy I hung out with, we called him Tiny, was with me. Well, we decided to go float the creek. Now, thing was, I mean, we didn't, we didn't really even think about it. I mean, I look back on it now and I'm like, oh wow, we could have died. <clears throat> Anyway, so we took off down the creek. We didn't have boats. We didn't have life preservers. We were just floating, swimming, basically. And, you know, if you just kind of body float, you can just kind of drift with the current. Well, we decided to do this when the creek was high. And <laughs> because it was high, there was one spot that had this excellent riverbank cliff. The water at this point was probably, it was probably about 20 feet deep at its bottom. So I got the bright idea that I'd go jump off of this and climbed up to the top of the riverbank. I had to leap over a fence, and down, there was a down fence at the top of this, so I had to leap over that. There's only a difference of maybe six inches between the edge of the bank and the fence. So I got up there, took a running leap, boom, cannonballed off of this thing. And that riverbank was a little higher than I anticipated, so I bottomed out. I hit my butt on the bottom of the riverbed. It was, it was pretty cool, pretty spectacular. Now, you know, with that in mind, when you think about things like cliff diving, that's why they tell you don't dive into unfamiliar waters. You know, I took the leap. I had taken a minute. We've been kind of just taking our time, relaxing after almost getting snagged up in some trees. And so I had taken a minute and kind of explored around there and made sure there was nothing that was necessarily going to kill me if I dove in, jumped in, and there's a lot of clay in that particular creek, and that's what was there, was a mixture of creek, of uh, clay and coal, actually. So it was pretty smooth along the bottom, there were no large rocks, no trees hanging out waiting to grab you. That was definitely one of the best jumps in my life. And it's weird because now sometimes when I get up high, I get kind of frozen and it's weird. I don't know. I'm working on that. 